Okay. Good morning and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent here at Christ Episcopal Church in Babylon, New York. Um, I want to thank all of you who um, prayed for me while I was ill. And I just want you to know that even though I am unmasked, I am by myself up here. Nancy is a good 12 feet away. And Dan is up in the balcony. And I just want to let you all know to be sure and continue to do everything you can to stay safe from this virus. Do your physical distancing, wear your masks, wash your hands, keep everything disinfected as possible. Do everything you can to stay safe. Now, let us begin. Our prelude is on the hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Christ is long expected and he's almost here. forever now thy gracious kingdom bring that is our theme for the day blessed be god father son and holy spirit and blessed be his kingdom now and forever amen jesus said the first commandment is this hear o israel the lord our god is the only lord love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house 
and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him. The king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, and I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be a prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones on the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, your house And your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Here ends the reading. Our response today is the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, Canticle 15. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, According to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Here ends the lesson. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. 
Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Purify our conscience by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself. That was from our collect this morning, our opening prayer. I'd like for us to pray another prayer together. The angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that we who have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought into the glory of his resurrection, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some of you have grown up with this prayer, and some of you have not. I did not grow up with this prayer as a Methodist, and I'm still taken aback by the overwhelming feeling of awe and powerlessness and at the same time powerfulness that I felt when I had a glimmer of what this prayer means for us and meant for me. As Christians, we believe in the incarnation. This is what Christmas is about. This is part of what Advent And our preparation for the coming of Christ is about. This is as important as the resurrection in a myriad of ways. We believe that Mary became that mansion prepared. That throne for Jesus to come dwell with us as a human being. She being chosen to gestate and bear the Son of God, came to be called the Mother of God, the Theotokos. That's Greek for God-bearer. What we must always be aware of and know is that we too, as humans, are called to bear Christ to the world daily. We pray in today's collect for God's daily visitation to us, to the mansion, to the home, to the throne in our hearts that we may show forth Christ in our daily lives. 
I invite you to pray this collect daily from now to Christmas. And that's what we pray when we pray the Angelus. Many Christians throughout the world pray this prayer three times a day. First thing in the morning when they get up, at noon, in the middle of the day's busyness, they stop and remind themselves. And at the close of day, when the busyness is through. In that wonderful doxological passage that we heard that Paul wrote to the early church in Rome, the mystery is that of the Word made flesh. And that mystery, as it is born in each of us through the obedience of faith, that faith that Mary had, even in the midst of terrible, terrible adversity. As she said, be it unto me according to thy word. This has been a terrible, terrible year for us, personally for many of us, for our community, for our nation, and for the world. We have been ill, we have lost loved ones and mourn. We have had terrible strife and division in our nation. At this point, we have had well over 300,000 die of the coronavirus. And it's not done with us yet. There have been jobs lost, businesses ruined, food and housing insecurity is increasing. And yet, and yet, we continue to see glimmers of hope, a vaccine. People beginning to open their eyes to the racial inequality around us and want to do something to change that. People who will gladly open their hearts and open their pocketbooks to help those who are in need, and people who want to have government who will support those who are in such terrible need. And we, we are among those who can incarnate that hope, incarnate those changes to make the world a place where the kingdom of God, where Christ breaks through. May we live our lives like Mary, saying yes. I close with a small poem by Mother Suzanne Guthrie called Angelic Greeting. Each day, a presence on the threshold announces Ave. And you, yes, you are blessed. Each day, the angels hold their breath, waiting to hear whether we might say, let it be done according to your word. Amen. And now, let us affirm our faith as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing with Mary that the word comes among us, let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our heart's willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the richness of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and in all the whole world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God of mystery, who dwells in unapproachable light, draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our assembly of disciples be a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power, so that we may give birth to Christ from the heart of our community for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in all our persons by Christ's saving work be brought to its fullness by our Savior. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we give thanks always for the model of Mary as one who says yes and generously gives of herself to bear Christ to the world. We give thanks, O Lord, for all the many blessings which we experience each day. We give thanks for all of those who are working in the field of medicine, for all of those who work in hospitals and group settings, including building engineers and building custodians, those who keep us safe. We pray for those in medical research, especially for those searching for a safe and effective vaccine and efficacious treatments. For all those working in public health, especially Nancy and our local Suffolk County Department of Health. We pray for all who work in public safety, all emergency personnel and first responders. We give thanks for and pray for all those involved in feeding ministries, especially for those who give of their energy and passion to nourish Babylon. We give thanks for those who work with those who are facing homelessness and housing insecurity. We give thanks for all of those who have continued to work here at the church behind the scenes to keep everything running over these many months. And especially, O oh Lord, I give thanks for all those who kept the church running when I could not come in. We celebrate and pray for those giving thanks for those celebrating birthdays. James Codella, Yusuf Termina, Caroline Marsden, Dan Connor, Tom Shepard, Vince Verney, and Stephen Specht. Lord, hear our prayer. May we remember before God all who are in any need and who cry for the presence of God, especially for Barbara and Frank, Bill D, Bob M, Bob C, Bob N, Bonnie H, Deb, Desmond, Eileen and Kirsten, Grace, James, Joanne, Lydia, Mama Claire, Nora, Phil B, Ronnie, Sandy, Elizabeth, Sister Joy, Nancy, Dolores, Christopher and family, Scott and family, 
Andrew, Zach, James, Stuart, Shannon, Kathy, Jeff, Tony, Marie, Richard, Annette, Peggy, Pastor Ford, Mother Claire, and Justin. We pray for all those across the United States and across the globe suffering from COVID-19. We pray for all those who are worried about their loved ones and friends who suffer and are hospitalized and those who are in grief following the death of their loved ones from this disease. We pray for all those who still do not understand the seriousness of this disease. May we remember before God those who are now enfolded in the closer presence of our Lord, especially Charlie Beers and the over 300,000 who have died of COVID-19 in our country. Lord, hear our prayer. Call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all the peoples of the world through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue our prayers for our country as we pray, Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage. We pray that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion the multitudes brought here out of many lands and tongues into one united people. Grant the spirit of wisdom to those entrusted with the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, may our trust in you not fail, all which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, Nancy. Peace be with you all. And now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Now, before, we, before our postlude, I have a few announcements. Let me see if I can find them. I can't. I'll just have to remember them. Remember that our parish Christmas party is this afternoon at 5 p.m. You can find us on Zoom. And if you need that Zoom link, you can go to your email. You received an email from the church that will have that Zoom link. Um, and um, if you need it, if you don't find it that way, call a friend, look on our website, uh, look on Facebook, and I think that you'll be able to find it. I'm hoping that as many of us can be there as possibly can. So five o'clock, five o'clock today on Zoom. And if you can't come in on your computer, come in through a conference call. I want to thank uh, everyone who made our Christmas wreath fundraiser a success. I know we probably, you probably can't see them, but the wreaths are here inside the church as well, and they are beautiful. 
And I hope that all of you who, uh, who um, purchase wreaths for your home and poinsettias are as happy as I am because they are just gorgeous this year. So thank you to Jack Scharf for all your hard work in doing that. Um, Christmas Eve is at 4 p.m. and it will be a short service of Christmas carols and prayers. We will gather on the front lawn. Be sure and wear your mask, your face covering, and be sure to keep your six foot social distancing between family groups. But this will be at least a short wave that we can gather and sing a few Christmas carols together. And then Christmas morning will be online, will be on uh, Facebook. So um, I look forward to being with you there. And then we will continue our usual round of services on Sundays and we'll be back to our Monday and Tuesday evening prayer and Wednesday morning uh, morning prayer. So we'll be, be back with all those, with that full round of services and look forward to praying with you then. I think that's all I have as announcements. It's great to be back and to be with you all. And now our closing hymn prelude is on O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. That is what we are praying. So um, I invite you to, uh, to meditate along with the text as Nancy plays our closing prelude, postlude. God.